Good afternoon. Uh, welcome everyone to this webinar on the module two of uh, EUDAMET. Uh, I'm here with my colleague uh, Fran Rodriguez and uh, we are going to present the uh, basically the impact in our organizations of EUDAMET and precisely uh, the uh, module two of EUDAMET. Uh, first of all, uh, mm, well, uh, my for those of you who uh, don't know Asphalion, uh, we will uh, present a brief introduction on uh, our company. Uh, my name is Lydia Canavas, I'm the General Manager of Regulatory Affairs here at Asphalion, and I'm here with my colleague Francisco Rodriguez. Uh, Francisco is Regulatory Affairs Officer and Medical Device Specialist. Um, and uh, mm, uh, brief uh, words uh, on Asphalion. If you can go to the next slide, we are an international scientific and regulatory affairs consultancy with uh, offices in Barcelona, Madrid, Munich, and London. And uh, um, we, uh, our company was founded uh, 20 years ago. Uh, and uh, we are a team of over 120 people with activity uh, worldwide. Uh, and our services. If you go to the next slide, please, Fran. Uh, we cover uh, activities on all the life cycle of the development of uh, medicinal products and medical device, uh, starting from the uh, early stages of uh, development uh, with regulatory and scientific strategy, uh, medical and scientific writing, including CMC, global submissions, e-submissions and data management, life cycle, and pharmacovigilance, including also vigilance for medical devices. And um, after this uh, brief introduction about Asphalion, mm -hmm. I give the word to my colleague Fran, who will explain the details of uh, Udamed and uh, more in detail the module two and its implications. Okay, thank you, Lydia, for your kind introduction. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for you, you all for joining this webinar. Uh, well, I hope you find it clear and, and useful. Uh, as Lydia commented, uh, my name is Francisco Rodriguez, and I will be accompanying you uh, through this webinar in which we will have a look to some of the most relevant aspects of the recently gone live uh, Model 2 of UDMED. Uh, with this end, we will follow the, well, the, the outline you can see in the slide. And at the end of the presentation, there will be some time uh, for questions. So, well, as Lydia commented, you can start writing your question uh, on the chat, and we will come back to them at the at the end of the presentation. Um, okay, so starting for the first part, uh, what is Udamed? Uh, basically, Udamed is a data repository that would be in direct response to the requirement for a European database, which is laid down in the well, the medical device and the in vitro diagnosis medical device regulations. Uh, Udamed is divided in a total of six interconnected uh, modules, uh, namely, as you can see in this figure feature, um, namely, uh, well, module one or actor registration modules, in which uh, all economics operators are identified, net. Uh, we have the UD device model, model two, in, in which the key characteristics of the device family or each medical device are included. Um, then we also have the, the model three, which is the model for notified bodies and certificates, where notified bodies are able to register themselves as such, and also uploading uh, well, all the certificates issued by them. Also, we have the, the vigilance model for reporting any institute incident or field safety corrective action concerning medical devices. Additionally, we also have the, the clinical investigation and performance studies model. And finally, we also have the uh, market surveillance model where report, uh, well, report of market surveillance prepared by the competent authorities uh, are unloaded. Uh, first of all, just uh, for uh, summarize some of the main objectives and benefits of this uh, UDAMED uh, database, uh, European database for medical devices, and the first and most basic objective is to identify all the economic operators. These are, uh, well, manufacturers, importers, authorized representatives, and system and procedure pack producers. Also, uh, these stakeholders will be, uh, as the owner of all the information they upload, they will be 
the, the last responsible for all the data available in Udamed. Of course, uh, competent authority have uh, also a full insight into the information included in the, in the database and the public, the, well, the public eye also have uh, access to the public domain of the of the database. Therefore, uh, while well, ensuring the transparency of the of the UDAMED database, UDAMED is also translated in a in a better traceability, as there is a clear insight to the distribution chains. And finally, one of the greatest advantage brought by UDAMED is the facilitated data chains with regard to the post market surveillance and vigilant issues. Uh, well, now we have outlined some of the main objectives and benefits of the UDAMED database. We may wonder, well, who actually has access to this database and which are the rights or permissions? Well, as I previously mentioned, um, UDAMED have a public domain and a restricted domain. The public domain only displays partial information and it's accessible to the general public through the European Commission website. In this slide, you can see the, the link in the, on the right and a QR code to, to accessing. Uh, on the other hand, for accessing the, the registered, uh, sorry, the restricted domain, ex holders need to have a, a EU login account linked to their work email address. Uh, each UDAMED account is associated with one or or one of the, well, the different actors, as I mentioned before, manufacturers, authorized representatives, importer, and system and pack producers. Uh, additionally, each of these actors has a specific role set out in their user profiles for each model they need to use. So uh, uh, this user profile describes the specific action um, a user can perform specifically in, in a given model of the database. Uh, profiles, as you can see in this table, are hierarchical. Therefore, a uh, high level profile contain all lower level ranks or rights. Okay. Um, first of all, when, when carrying out a, a register in, in UDAMED, a local actor administration, namely LAA, must to be proposed for the approval of a competent authorities. This local actor administration have the most complete access to the database and is the only user that can actually manage the information of the economic operator. Then uh, we will also have to uh, designate a, a second user profile which is the local user administrator, which will, which will be the person responsible for, uh, well, appointing user roles to different people of, uh, of an organization uh, under the same economic operator. Uh, just for your notice, uh, the European Commission strongly recommend having at least two local actor administration to act as a fail-safe mechanism in case one of them is una unable to respond. Okay, so now we have made a, a little introduction to, to UDAMED database and how to access this database. And, and then we will focus on the most important piece of news of the last month, which was the gone life of the Model 2 of UDAMED. Uh, the entry into operation of this model, Model 2 and actually Model 3 also, uh, was expected to be in September this year. However, uh, this, uh, this issue, this that was postponed uh, to the beginning of October. And October the 4th, uh, the news you can see in the slide was published in the European Commission UDAMED website. Without the, the shadow of a doubt, uh, this is a major update of UDAMED, especially regarding to Model 2, as is this the one that will have a, a greater impact uh, on manufacturers to register their medical devices in compliance with all the regulations uh, requirements. Uh, next slide. Okay, so so as you can see here in, in this slide, until now, only the module one for a registration on economics of economic operator was available in UDAMED. But now, from October uh, the 4th onwards, module two and three are also operational. The opening of the remaining model, uh, the clinical investigation and performance studies, the model for vigilance and post market surveillance, and also the, the model for market surveillance. Uh, has been delayed, postponed, and is expected to be in May of the next year. Uh, during after, uh, the obligation and requirement in the MDR that relate to the UDAMED uh, shall apply six months later after the date of application, sorry, after the date of the publication of the fully functionality of UDAMED. So that means uh, that if for May 2022, UDAMED will be fully functionally by November 2022, uh, it will be mandatory to uh, upload all the information 
needed to for the UDAMED. Uh, but well, we have to say that we're going back to the implementation timeline in a few in a few slides. Uh, and then for the rest of the presentation, we will focus uh, mainly in module two, since as I commented before, it's the model with a major impact on manufacturers. Okay, so due to its novelty, one of the, the aspects that we could say that cause most concern among manufacturers with regard to module two is the information that have to be included. So there are indeed um, a large number of fields to fill in when registering a product in UDAMED. At Asphalion, for example, we have mapped all this information that needs to be entered and also all the source documentation where the, this information can be found. So as you can see um, in the slide, the information to be entered could be divided, main, divided mainly, mainly in, in two parts, uh, one related to the basic UDDI code or product family, another, another part related to the UDDI or product specific. So we will address uh, the UD identifiers, uh, both the basic UDDI and also the UDDI in more details in, in the next section. But uh, just as a summary, in total, we can say that there are approximately 130 fields to be filled in when making a complete registration in UDAMED Model 2. Obviously, no, not all the fields will be mandatory or applicable for all the products that, that will depend on the specific characteristic, characteristic of each device. So, um, in summary, it can be seen that uh, the majority of information, approximately the 70%, is related to each specific model, and the 30%, uh, remaining 30% is uh, information regarding the product family. The sources of information, as you can see also in the diagram, uh, is largely covered by the quality management system, once it is in compliance with the regulation, regulation regimes, and also, it's also available in the technical documentation in different sections uh, of the technical documentation of the product. OK, so if we move on in this section, UD codes and implementation timeline, we will review more specifically the, well, the main definition of the different type of UD codes and also the implementation timelines regarding the product labeling and technical documentation. So what's the UDI? Well, the UDI is an identification code that will link many documents and devices with and within the UDAMED database. UD codes include three types of, of code, the basic UDDI, the UDPI, and the, uh, sorry, the UDDI and the UDPI. The, um, the basic UDPI is the main access key for the, for the device related to the information in, in UDAMED. The basic UDDI is identified not a single device, but a family of different devices. That means a family of devices that are sharing uh, the same characteristics regarding, for example, the intended purpose, risk class, essential design, and also manufacturing characteristics. Uh, then we, we have the, the UDDI, which is the main identifier of a medical device used on its labeling. Um, this identifier identifies sorry, the, the specific device within a given product family. Additionally, if applicable, uh, each device may maybe have an additional uh, UD code and a higher level UDDI code, which is the uh, package UDDI. The package UDDI identify each of the, of the package configuration, including the, all the quantities of item that each package level includes. And then, sorry, I jumped. The slide here. And then we have the UDPI. Uh, UDPI identified the unit of device production. There are different types of configuration for this UDPI, uh, but some examples include, include the serial number, the lot number, also the, the software identification or the, the number of the version of the software for the medical device softwares, and also some dates such as the expiracy date or the date of manufacturing. Uh, then the, the UD code uh, shall be emitted, as can be seen here in this slide, uh, by, the dif by different uh, issuing entities. One of the largest agencies in Europe is the GS1. Then we also have the, the uh, HIBCC and also the ICCBA, both from the USA, which are highly specialized in hospital equipment. And finally, in Europe, we also have the, the IFA or IFA, as they say in German, which is established in, here in Europe, in Germany. 
Okay, uh, now we have uh, come through the definitions, but where do these codes really appear? No? Uh, well, the, the basic EDDI is independent or, or separate from the packaging or the labeling of the device and does not appear on any trade item uh, of the device. There are just some sections for the basic EDDI appearing in on the IFUs of the medical devices, but does, as I said, it are just some sections. On the contrary, uh, this code, uh, despite not being, let's say, uh, available to the public, uh, shall be included, shall be available in the different sections of the technical documentation that you can see in the slide. So mainly the, the technical documentation itself, but also in the EU Declaration of Conformity, CE, CE certificates, certificates for pre-sale, summary of safety and clinical performance, vigilance and post-market surveillance reports, and clinical investigation for, for post-market study. Uh, with regard to the UDDI and the UDPI, they do have to appear uh, in the distributed medical devices in the information provided by the manufacturer and they may appear either in a human readable or a match machine readable format okay so on the right part of the slide you can see two types of machine readable carriers the barcode and the data matrix uh, together with the human uh, readable format in the case of the on the of the barcode uh, finally, uh, talking about some exceptions, as I mentioned before, I just wanted to highlight in this square two particularities. The first one is regarding the well, medical devices uh, which are software, medical device softwares. Um, in this case, the UDPI is strongly related with the number of the version of the software. And the other particularity was uh, regarding procedure packs. So in this case, procedure pack, uh, packs, as commented before, must issue a specific UDDI for the pack, but for the pack as a whole, regardless uh, on whether each of the devices uh, which constituted the, the, the procedure pack already bears uh, a UD code or not, it doesn't matter. The, the complete configuration must uh, have the, its own UD code. Okay, so once we have gone over where to play this UD code, we will talk about uh, some timelines of, of the implementations. Um, well, in this slide, uh, we'll discuss, discuss all these uh, timeline implementations for the different product categories and also for different uh, um, aspects, such as the basic UDDI, UD carriers, and also the registration in UDAMED. So first of all, uh, regarding the, the basic UDDI, for medical devices, uh, it is mandatory since the date of application of the MDR, which was, which was last uh, May 25th of this year. Uh, with regard to the IBDs, so far the date continues to be the same, the same as the entry into four of the IBDR, which is expected to be well, which is which is um, May 26th of the, of the next year. And next, with regard to the obligation to include the UD carrier on the labeling of medical devices, as you can see in the in the figure, uh, this varies depending on the risk class and the characteristics of the device. But can we see? Uh, it should be noted that there are also a specific application dates for direct marking in the case of reusable medical devices. And finally, uh, with regard to the registration in in UDAMED, Today, uh, registration is available in Module 1 and 2 on a voluntary basis. However, the, the European Commission uh, recommends that registration is carried out of each in each model uh, well, as soon as they are available. Um, mainly, well, as I commented before, uh, apart from this, uh, let's say, grace period, um, six months after the date of the publication of the fully functionality of UDAMED, uh, that could be compulsory. Let's say if the UDAMED database is completely functional by uh, the 26th of May of the next year, by November next year, uh, it could be mandatory to include all the required information in this database. All right, so, so far we have been discussing, uh, well, all the UDAMED and UDCOS uh, issues regarding MDR and IPDR products. But what happened with medical devices that are still certified with, uh, well, within the directive regime? Well, those devices are the so-called legacy devices. 
the formal definition of a legacy device is a device certified under the previous legislative framework given by the, the medical device directive and that continues to be placed on the market during the medical device regulation regime. Okay, so according to the, um, to the European Commission, legacy devices have the possibility to be registered in Module 2 of UDAMED on a voluntary basis. But there are two times in which uh, this is not voluntary but mandatory. Uh, the first uh, case is 24, uh, 24 months after the, the UDAMED is fully functional. Uh, well, as I said before, function, fully functionality is expected in May next, next year, so 24 months later it will be May 2024. But by the way, this is the date uh, which it is estimated that all directive certificates uh, will have already expired. So the first bullet is, it doesn't matter, it's, it's, a, it's let's say obvious that by that day uh, your legacy device will no longer be a legacy device, but a uh, uh, recategorization and will turn into an um, MDR or IVDR device. Uh, but the second bullet, uh, it's very important to for manufacturers of legacy devices because in, if there is a, a, a serious vigilant issue, uh, you as a manufacturer will only be able to notify this vigilant issue if your legacy device is already registered in UDAMED. So for this reason, it's, it's very important that you get ready, you gather all the information needed for, in this case, for Module 2, uh, so that you can perform uh, the register smoothly in case uh, you need to notify any vigilance issues. So here, for well, we talk, we will talk later about how to perform this register for legacy devices. But first of all, we have to talk about legacy device devices identifiers. For legacy devices, there are practically homologous identifiers to those of the of the MDR and IVDR devices. Okay, so uh, here, as you can see, there is a, a fake basic UDVI, namely the UDAMED DI, which addresses for the same fields as the basic UDVI in module two. Although in this case, uh, as you can see in the in the figure on the right, um, the UDAMED DI it not identifying a whole family of devices, but uh, one device uh, specifically. Uh, then we have also the, the UDAMED ID, which is as, at the same level than the UDVI. And in this case, it, it also address the same fields uh, as the UDVI in Module 2 of UDAMED. So legacy devices might already have a, a UDVI, especially for those legacy devices which come from the the USA, where there exists a similar coding system. However, if they do not, they will need to generate beforehand a UDAMED DI, the so-called fake basic UDVI. So for this generation of the fake basic UDVI, the UDAMED DI, um, the European Commission has published an, an algorithm so that economic operators can um, generate this code uh, on their own. And next, the, the UDAMED ID, or the homologous to the UDVI, is automatically generated by UDAMED uh, based on either the UDVI when available or in the UDAMED DI once generated by the manufacturer. Finally, regarding to legacy devices, uh, well, in this slide, you have the, the implementation timelines for the implementation of the register in UDAMED Module 2. Uh, as mentioned before, the, the option of carrying out this register is there on a voluntary basis until May 2024. But bearing in mind that for notifying any incident or safety corrective action regarding your devices, you will have to previously register in, in, be registered in UDAMED. It is strongly recommended uh, to start implementing this process as soon as possible. Now, especially that the Module 2 is available. So this way, as I commented before, we well, you will ensure that in the event of an incident, your products are already ready or or even registered within the UDAMED database, and any vigilant issues can can be reported without any problem. Mm -hmm. At the same time, if we we think in the future, once your uh, MDD or IVDD certificate expire, you will already have all the information regarding your devices in UDAMED, and you just will have to to link your new uh, MDR or IVDR device with the previous legacy device, 
we will come back to this point of linking legacy devices with, with MDR or IVDR devices at the end of the presentation. Okay, and finally, the last section of this webinar is regarding the, the data submission in Module 2 of Udamed. Okay, so firstly, as I mentioned in the, in the first section, there are a, a specific user for each of the module of Udamed. So in this case, for Module 2, there are mainly three, uh, three types of user profiles. In order from, well, you can see in the slide, in, in order from lowest to highest hierarchy, uh, we have the, the viewer that is only allowed uh, to, to view the device data. Also, the, we have the proposer that may create and delay draft records. And finally, we have the confiner that, in addition to proposer rights, may also submit or discard records in the, in the model. Additionally, another point to comment is the, well, the topology of data that you will find in, in Model 2 of Udamed. When entering the, the, the database, you will find that the majority of fields are either in drop down menus or, or text boxes. OK, so this is done mainly for guaranteeing that the, the consistency of the all the data you include, you include are achieved. Additionally, this typology of data, the, the text boxes and the drop downs, help keeping data homo homogeneity among, among the different uh, languages of the European Union. Uh, notwithstanding, you will also find uh, some uh, open text fields, as you can see in the slide, uh, additional information, uh, the fields regarding the product information, regarding warnings, contraindications, storage conditions, and handling conditions. For those fields, uh, the, the open text fields, you will have to, be, to translate the information during the register so that it is available in all the language where the product is distributed. Okay, so now um, how will be the, the data uploaded in, in Module 2 of Udamed? Well, especially when talking, when talking about the data upload of the device information, uh, you have to bear in mind that there are many fields to be uploaded. So uh, there are three uh, three types of, of data submissions. We have the one by one. Uh, let's say uh, you do one register for each of the of your medical devices. Then we have the the XML file or backup load in which you fill in an, an XML file and then you upload like the name says a bulk a, a, a bunch of data all together in one single action. And then uh, we have also the, the machine to machine, which is a, a kind of, well, the, it is the more complex data migration. And it consists that there is a compatibility between your RIM system and the UDAMED database. So, so yeah, you just have to uh, send the information and the information is uh, ordered and, and organized in, in, the, in the way that UDAMED requires. So um, this one, well, there are different specifications for each of the type of uploading data. Um, this one by one process is, for example, recommended for manufacturers with a, with a more portfolio. And in the case of, um, well, manufacturers with a bigger portfolio, you have to, to bear in mind that if you are using this one by one procedure, uh, the whole process will take a, a, a considerably longer, and also the chances of including an, an error in the in the information you upload will considerably increase. Therefore, for manufacturers with a medium portfolio, there is the possibility of uploading their data via the the bulk upload. So in this in this procedure, as I said, just by, by clicking one action, you submit a, a complete. Uh, uh, group of data. Okay, and then for manufacturers with a large portfolio, there is the possibility of migrating their data directly from the RIM system, the regulatory information management system, uh, in a, well, in the procedure called matching to matching. So it's worth noting that for uh, those who are using the, the, or who want to use the bulk upload or the machine to machine alternative, it's very important to check compatibility with all the UDMS specification beforehand. Um, this is very important because uh, this is not a, a, an easy task and it may, this may need a, 
a really great effort by an IT team to develop these systems that, uh, following all the guidance of the European Commission, uh, comply with all the uh, specification of the UDAMED database. Okay, but um, before continuing, for the purpose of this webinar, I'm taking that it is planned to give a, a brief overview of the Model 2. We will just be focusing on the one-by-one -one procedure for data uploading, which is, uh, by the way, the, the type of data submission established by default in the in the UDAMED database. So in, in order to carry out this, this submission, we will explain the, the steps um, to, com to perform a complete upload by registering uh, in, in one hand, a uh, basic UDDI, and in the other hand, together, uh, a first uh, UDDI for the first time. Uh, we will follow this scheme, which is well, which has been recently addressed by a European Commission guideline, which was published published last month. And um, well, let's start. First of all, uh, before starting or carrying on the register itself, uh, manufacturers have to prepare themselves uh, for the for the whole procedure. So in with this end, the, the, the most basic first step to be registered is to be registered in a well in a in the module one of UDAMEC as an economic operator and to be one of the actors linked to this economic operator. Secondly, uh, it is highly recommended uh, that all the information uh, needs to be uh, uh, that needs to be uploaded is prepared and gathered beforehand. So this is to ensure that the registration process is carried out in an effectively in an effective way, and also to avoid a possible mistake during the, the uploading. And finally, in order to be able to, to upload the whole uh, well all the data, it is necessary to be one of the of specific user profiles of the model two. As I mentioned before, each model uh, has different uh, user profiles. So in model two of UDAMED, if you want to uh, submit, well, to, to, to introduce or delete data, you have to be a, a proposer. And in addition, if you want to submit or delete records, you have to be a confirmer. So you have to be sure that uh, you as a manufacturer uh, are bearing, is very, uh, what's it, are bearing uh, one of these two user profiles. So in this case, um, in case you are just a viewer, you have to click on the, on the modifying option and the local actor administration of your uh, uh, economic operator will have to uh, validate this change. And once you are a confirmer or a proposer, you can start uploading all the documentation. Okay, so once this point has been checked, you are ready or you will be ready to, to perform uh, the actual upload of all, of all the information in this module. So um, the next step will be to fill in each of the fields within the, the information requested by UDAMED. Uh, as mentioned before, uh, Asphalion has made a, a mapping uh, to identify all the fields that need to be filled in, um, and also uh, the typology of data which in, within each field and the, the source documentation where to find this information. Okay. Uh, additionally, in adi um, apart from that, uh, the European Commission has made public uh, uh, data, data sets, like a, a kind of infographic where you can uh, check all the information that you will need to upload. And there, are, there is also the so-called data dictionaries with the definition and the description of the European, of, of, sorry, of each of the fields and which have been published by the European Commission in this model of UDAMED. Um, it is worth noting that uh, the certificate information, this point two, uh, must just be provided for those medical devices which provide the well, uh, conformity assessment carried out by a notified body. Um, if not, uh, it doesn't have to be fulfilled and you can jump it to the third part of the of the one by one uh, upload submission. Okay, so <clears throat> sorry. Okay, so once the register uh, the registration draft have been completed, um, in case you are a, a confirmer profile, it is possible to submit uh, the information. 
So after submitting the device data, the state will be uh, one of the, the two states you have in the slide. Register if the basic UDDI does not require a confirmation from a notified body, or submit it in the case your basic UDDI do re uh, does require the confirmation from a notified body. Once this notified body carry out the confirmation, the status, uh, status automatically switch from the submitted to the registered state. Additionally, <clears throat> in the case uh, a, a product family consists of more than one medical device, it is possible to, to add more UDDI codes uh, within the, the, the context of a record of a basic UDDI of, of a product family. To do so, it will be necessary to select the option that appears on the slide and enter only the information related to the UDDI. In this case, the UDDI identification information, UDDI characteristics, device information, and container package details. Then submit the information and, uh, well, you will be uh, either as in the registered state or in the submitting state I mentioned before. Okay, so um, so far all the, the process explained before applies to the so-called regulation devices, but what happens with the registration of legacy devices? Well, in these cases, um, it's, it's a bit tricky because you have to remember that there is the possibility of uh, a legacy device is already having uh, a UDDI. So this is the first step. Um, if you want, we can um, divide this diagram in two parts. So considering that we have a legacy device already uh, bearing a UDDI, um, the next step for the registration is provide that UDDI. So as legacy devices has had their own identifiers, once we have the UDDI, we will need to create the uh, fake basic UDDI, the so-called Eudamed DI. So how um, we can do it? Well, that depends on, on, on the type of data submission we are, we are carrying out. Uh, in the case we are doing a, a submission based on bulk upload or machine to machine, uh, we have to create the, the UDAMED DI uh, based on the UDDI. And as you can see here, it's a really simple procedure because it just consists of adding a, a B as a prefix on your UDDI. And in the case um, you are carrying out the submission based on a one by one procedure, uh, the, the simplest one, um, the UDAMED database automatically generates the, UDD, U, the UDAMED DI based on the UDDI. In this case, it's an automatic procedure. Once you have the two identifiers, the UDAMED DI, either generated by UDAMED or by yourself, and the UDDI, you can carry on with the, with the register and complete, it, complete all, all the fields of the Model 2 for your legacy device. Okay, so now in the, in the case that your legacy device is not bearing a, a UDDI, uh, you first have to uh, provide a UDAMED DI. And how we can do it? Well, uh, remember that in, well, in the European Commission website of UDAMED, um, it has been published a, an algorithm to follow so that you can create your UDAMED DI or fake basic UDDI based on different information, sort of information. It's a really simple procedure. So you can create it by yourself. And once you have your UDAMED uh, DI, you will uh, see that it has this format. It also uh, having or, or bearing a prefix uh, starting by B. Okay, so next, if you continue with the procedure, that will depend on whether you are, again, using a bulk upload machine to machine or a one by one procedure. In the first case, uh, you will have to provide yourself the, the UDAMED ID, which is created basically by uh, dropping the B and adding a D to the uh, UDAMED DI. And in the case you are using a one by one procedure, UDAMED automatically generates the UDAMED ID based on the UDAMED DI you have provided. Okay, so uh, next uh, we will talk about linking uh, regulation devices to legacy devices. So th this is a, 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 an event that will occur when your legacy device, when the certification of your legacy device expires. So in those cases, a new regulation device shall be registered in UDAMED in accordance with the MDR and IBDR requirements. So EUDAMED allows linking uh, uh, the regulation device with the legacy device and perform this linking automatically in the case that the same UDDI has been assigned to both the legacy device and the regulation device. This link, uh, as I said, it may 
at the, at the level of the UDDI. So if the regulation device is exactly the same as the legacy device, except for the fact that one is MDR or IBDR, um, under the MDR or IBDR and the other under the MDD or the IBDD, the regulation device may have the same UDDI as the legacy device. So in this case, the link between the two devices, the legacy and the MDR, will be made automatically. Otherwise, the manufacturer can create this link also manually by providing the legacy device identifiers. And now, just I'm, I'm just ending. Now, before closing the session, uh, here are some important remarks on EUDAMED data entry. As I mentioned before, uh, non-EU economic operators must rely on a EU authorized representatives. That was regarding the the first section when I talk about the, the different user profiles in the UDAMED uh, database. All the data uh, registered by the non-EU manufacturer, for example, have to be validated by an authorized representative. Also, for traceability purposes, the UDAMED database does not allow to edit in data. This is, means that new versions uh, of the complete register have to be created every time a change is made. And, and it is very really important to track all these changes because uh, once you carry out a new submission, you will have to uh, provide the number of the previous version you were uploading. Um, also, it's, it's very important to consider that viewers, the, the public viewers, uh, can see in the public domain uh, how many versions of each of the register you have. So it's therefore very important to enter all the data correctly so that uh, to avoid um, generating a really high number of version for each of the medical devices which can cause a negative light of a manufacturer or of a product. And finally, um, well, this is the end of the presentation. Here we have some of our final remarks, recommendations and let's say take home messages for completing this new webinar. So uh, I'm just reading the slide according to, to the MDR and IDDR. You the, and device code, uh, sorry, the, the models UDDI and the UD device and registration model is not mandatory until UDAMET is fully functional. Um, all the registration in this UDAMET model remains voluntary. It is highly recommended by the competent authority that manufacturers gradually register their products in UDAMET. Uh, you should plan the registration strategy on your product ahead so that to uh, ensure that it's carried out smoothly according to the established timeline based on your specific uh, characteristic for your device. And before you start entering uh, all the details and all the information in Model 2, you should make sure that you have all the information requested beforehand, including both the basic UDDI and the UDDI codes. So well, that was the, that is the end of the presentation. Thank you to all of you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed the webinar and um, now I'm here uh, to answer your question. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fran. Um, is there any question from the audience? Right now? No, Lydia, there's no questions now. There is no questions. Uh, there are no questions um, so far. Then, uh, well, uh, please feel free to send us uh, questions uh, after these webinars if uh, questions arise later. Uh, and what we retain from the uh, explanation from Fran is that well, uh, although not being uh, mandatory, it is important to uh, start mapping these 130 fields uh, of uh, information for our devices to be ready to upload the information. Mm -hmm. uh, and especially in, in case of uh, incidents, um, it will be uh, mm, certainly needed. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, uh, this is our recommendation. And uh, as I said, if there is no question uh, right now, um, we can close the webinar and uh, feel free to contact us. I Sorry, Livia, there's a question now. I um, Okay. Yes, someone said I would like to know more about how to obtain a UD 
has it any cost? Okay, well, uh, for obtaining you the codes, uh, you have to well, to contact with the issuing entities. Um, for example, there are some type of code that you can obtain, obtain on your own. For example, uh, regarding GS1, GS1, um, well, you have to, to, to have a membership to this issuing entity. And once you are a member of GS1, you just can use their, their tools. They have um, what they call the, the, the calculator so that you can upload some identifiers for your device and this tool automatically generates your basic UDDI. And the same applies for the UD, UDDI. In the case of, of the UDPI, that's, it's contain really, let's say, changing uh, information because that's depending on, on each uh, production device. And that could be a, a, an issue regarding the well packaging industry and, and all the printing industry uh, that already put the, the barcode or the or the data matrix on the device. That could be the, the answer, yes. I don't know if there are any more questions. Yeah, we have another question from um Anarita, um, Anarita is asking, what about device variants and should they have a different UDI, UDDI? Sorry. <laughs> yes. Well, that's depend on the on the variants because uh, actually, in the, for example, in the MDR, uh, there is a a part where they explain all the changes that will uh, require a new UDDI to be obtained. So, for example, in the case, I don't know, I, I, I know one example in the case you, you, you have a medical device and you start commercializing it in another country. As you do a translation of all the information uh, provided with the device, you will have to, um, to address a new UDDI. So, yes, there is time sections where you have to, to that you have to consider uh, so that to assess whether your variant uh, need a new, a new UDDI or not. Yes. There mm -hmm. is another question from Francesc. Uh, Francesc is asking if uh, uh, the presentation will be shared with uh, attendees. Uh, um, Lydia Molins, can you confirm if we can share a, a PDF of, of the presentation? Um, yes, we can provide this and also we are going to um, introduce it in our YouTube channel. It mm -hmm. will be available there too. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, any other question from the audience? Yes. Well, has Lydia commented in case you any question arise on your head uh, afterwards, it doesn't mind, you can write us and, and we will try to give you an answer as soon as possible. Uh, so it doesn't matter. Okay, uh, then uh, thank you to all attendees in the name of Asphalion and um, we are very grateful to you uh, for attending and uh, um, keep in touch and uh, tune it to the news on Udamed. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you.